Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining the Step in 17 webinar. Uh, my name is Arman Mutari. I am the CEO of Lambda Science, and I have with me today Alex, uh, Colin, and Kayla. Um, we are going to start right at 2 p.m. Uh, there are two housekeeping items that I would like to share with you. Uh, first of all is that you have two links um, to join the uh, webinar. Uh, one of them is for if you want a CBD point. Uh, that is, uh, you're going to join through Lambda Meet, and uh, the other one is going to be uh, through YouTube. Uh, if you have any questions, you can uh, ask the questions in the chat on YouTube. It is um, on the right uh, portion of the screen or uh, underneath the video on the right. And you will, you may need a uh, Google account uh, to uh, answer, to ask your questions in the chat. For the uh, Lambda Meet, uh, please uh, be sure to um, use the chat on the uh, bottom left corner. And uh, it, will, it may ask you for your name. Uh, please be sure to have in your name inside the profile as you're instructed in the joining instru instructions. Um, anyways, without further ado, it's two o'clock. So uh, let's get started on that. I just want a sound check if someone can give that to me. Uh, can you hear me really well? Okay, I said thumbs up. Um, also on YouTube, uh, just waiting for Kayla to answer. Yes, okay, looking all good. Thank you so much. Um, so moving, uh, diving into the uh, step in webinar, uh, it's gonna be a very um, action-packed next hour. So uh, let's, let's dive into it. Uh, so the first thing we are going to talk about uh, is about uh, the home buyer uh, per, uh, preference study that was done by Avid Ratings Canada and CHPA. Uh, you may have been uh, tracking these uh, studies um, since a while back, and uh, every time they come out, there is uh, a lot of interesting insights that they provide uh, inside their um, their results. Um, the typically their results are the same um, in terms of the overall um, characteristics of buyer preferences, but there are trends of uh, things going down and coming up, um, uh, and those trends really show where the market is heading. Now, one of the things that hasn't much changed since the last years uh, in the 2020 report that they had that just came out uh, yesterday, so as, uh, as fresh as it can get, uh, was the buyer preference about energy efficiency. So when the buyers are asked whether they're going to compromise energy efficiency for a more affordable home, the answer they give is no, and only 4.4% of the uh, people uh, say yes to that. While uh, we, we have this uh, really high appeal of energy efficiency from the Canadian consumer, which understands that if they uh, compromise energy efficiency, they need to pay uh, more for it uh, in the future with the operational costs and uh, lower building quality. When the Canadian uh, buyers are asked if they want to spend $10,000 in their next home, if possible, what would they spend it on? Only 16% of them uh, say that they're gonna spend this money on energy efficiency. So we have the majority of the buyer populace being really interested in energy efficiency and uh, not really compromising for that. But in the meantime, they uh, the majority of the Canadians uh, do not want to pay for it as their top priority when it comes to $10,000 of, uh, of expenditure. This may sound uh, paradoxical and without any particular solutions, but this is the visualization that we always like to show. Uh, if you have been uh, in our previous webinars, uh, you have probably seen this. On the left, we have a building that has um, a very high um, uh, insulation on the roof and very low insulation on the windows. It doesn't have very harmonized performance. So the overall performance is actually rather poor, uh, but the costs are rather high. And um, opposite of that is a house that has a very harmonized level of insulation uh, along the roofs and uh, the walls and windows 
um, and that is going to get way more performance uh, at less cost. So we are talking about the effectiveness of the cost uh, as opposed to the uh, performance level. In this webinar, we are going to um, dive deep into what is the uh, real um, indicators of performance and what is it translating into in a real project with three um, real uh, uh, life projects that um, in fact are uh, going to uh, cover, help us cover uh, different aspects of gaps inside um, the construction uh, phase and also in the design phase that we can bridge way way sooner at the earliest stage of the design thinking process and we are going to hopefully bridge uh, those gaps uh, using the, the methods and tricks that we are going to learn and we are going to primarily use uh, a step win or a tool for for that purpose however um, i think it's very important to keep in mind that a lot of these needs to be internalized by the design team and uh, no matter how your preference is in terms of uh, approaching these issues uh, this good practice can be extended far and wide uh, within the construction project design phase. Now, moving on, uh, in this one hour, we are going to uh, quickly summarize the past webinar. We are going to uh, see the integrated design process in action. We are also going to um, look at four missing pieces in the conventional design process and have a summary. So this uh, uh, integ uh, integrated design process um, action uh, piece of the um, webinar is going to separate it into three projects. We are going to identify the costing drivers and we are going to um, see how those drivers interact with costing. Summary of the past webinar. We talked in the past webinar about uh, the um, sort of credentials and um, uh, the um, properties that the salespeople inside the process, the, inside the um, sort of credentials and, and the properties that is advertised for every product. You may be looking at a, um, a boiler system with a very high uh, performance or an energy star label or a uh, insulation that has a very high R value per inch. Uh, you may also look at uh, different window systems that uh, have uh, special coatings or special uh, considerations in their framings. But that really does not translate to overall uh, per high performance in the building. Uh, the high performance is happening when you combine all of these cases together. So the combination of these, let's say you have two windows and, and three walls and uh, four mechanical systems, the combinations of these need to be assessed individually and that's the, the, the work that Stephen does for you. When you have uh, that many options, you will get an exponential number of cases, the more variety you are bringing into your project. So it really overwhelms the capacity of manual testing um, uh, when, when it comes to um, uh, the, uh, you know, figuring out what is the uh, easiest and, and most cost-effective way of approaching um, a, um, a, a, a design. And translating those um, uh, projects into the integrated design process, um, um, I think it's important to keep in mind that we are talking about the very earliest stage of the design, um, but uh, here we are seeing some architectural drawings in one of the projects, project number one. Um, these architectural drawings, uh, they are um, having um, a, a representation of where the project is ending up. But at this stage is where most of the buildings costing and energy opportunities, uh, improvement opportunities of, of costing and energy efficiency are lost. So you want to approach a building at the very, very earliest stages of the design instead of really trying to focus on here. So uh, inside the Stepping Interface, we have a uh, number of projects that we have prepared for today's uh, webinar. Uh, we have uh, the uh, one of the strategies that we are going to show about this uh, project number one uh, of using a Stepping is about uh, looking at 
the strategies that the Stepmin takes to uh, improve a design. And here uh, we we are we are having a list of all of our windows. Uh, we are having the the walls that are set in this project. We have the dimensions of each floor. Uh, we are also having um, our options for uh, foundations and basements and windows all here. So when we reach the run page and we click on uh, start a run, uh, what we will get here is uh, a, a run that um, um, uh, is going to basically combine all of the choices that we've had. It's going to show those uh, choices as uh, one of our um, designs that you see inside this scatter graph. I'll get to what this scatter graph is doing. And we are also seeing the ranges of uh, the design uh, according to the step that it's meeting. But my goal from showing you this particular design and, and walking you through this design is showing you the, the reporting page. Uh, so the reporting page is, um, is, is showing you, uh, first of all, what are the costing drivers, what is the rough step you are meeting for, for this design, what are your uh, embodied carbon and, uh, and, uh, and operational carbon indications for the project. So um, when you uh, get the results, you also see a graph of uh, building energy step code metrics. Uh, something to be very about is that here we have the design being into a step five, but the threshold between a step four and five is 18 and our design is 17. So we are very close to um, a step four, but uh, we have to keep that in mind. Uh, for the other ones, we are for the, the other metrics, we are firmly into a step four. So our design is, is high, uh, high performance uh, at this level right now. But what I really want to show you here is the heat loss and gain graph. Uh, so the heat loss and gain, uh, the envelope loss and gain is um, is all about understanding um, uh, what is the uh, offsets that passive loads can uh, create inside the building. So here we have uh, envelope heat loss, which is uh, the amount of heat that is going out of the building for uh, through the uh, insulations and, and assemblies and um, you know the general losses of the heat. But also we are recovering some of that lost heat through internal gains and solar gains. So internal gains are things such as occupants and appliances and the solar gains are uh, the sunbeam. Now, um, looking at this balance, you will see that a lot of that solar heat loss in a moderate month like September is getting um, uh, compensated for uh, by the heats, uh, by the uh, levels of gains that we have. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you are looking at this graph is that the, the amount of gains that you're, you're seeing here are usable. And this is uh, one of the also practices that you see in HOT 2000, that the, the heat gains are uh, really, really shown in a way that what is their effectiveness for uh, addressing the heat losses. However, if you are thinking about overheating and the possibility of overheating, this is not what it shows. So if you have the usable gains, uh, these usable gains are the parts at the times that are addressing uh, some of the losses. And you may have many many other times that you don't have any loss you actually have an overheating in in the in the in the space and uh the internal gains and the solar gains are uh contributing to those overheating and it's not locked here but um here we when we um look at different designs we see that uh Stephen is is primarily focusing on uh using the passive heat gains uh, when it comes to um finding the uh proper a strategy of creating a high performance home and these passive heat gains uh, are in fact um, done in, a, in an extent and for the intent of uh, covering as much uh, envelope heat loss as possible and reducing that so that we have an overall high performance home and uh, without much of a need for a mechanical system uh, usage as much as possible. But in order to um, give an appreciation of the complexity of uh, understanding the usable gains in the building, I'm just gonna go and make a very simple change. I'm going to go and uh, change the, uh, one of the windows from north facing, a group of windows from north face facing to south west facing. And 
I will go to back to the run page, click on the run again. Now you see this strategy is telling me that using passive solar passive heat gains is the, has been the strategy for the project. But as the results start to come in, um, I would like to uh, go to them and try to understand what is changing there. So uh, going into the, the top result after moving the windows, we actually quickly see that the strategy now has changed to balancing insulation. And the reason for that and kind of the indicator for that is that the step in has gone and started using the medium solar heat gain coefficients. Now to help uh, put in put this into the right context um, let's look at what we did we moved a northwest facing window to a southwest facing uh, group of windows to a southwest facing uh, location and what that means is we have more sun coming in so the amount of um, um, the amount of uh, solar heat gain that we are receiving to offset those heat losses um, is going to be um, is going to be uh, not as as much that uh, we need a high solar heating coefficient to actually like have have them being in the in the usable range, or in other words, uh, because we have more sun coming in, well, we we may not need to uh, be as uh, as much high solar heating coefficient as uh, the previous designs. Inside these designs, you, you can still find strategies with high solar heating coefficient, but the dominance of the strategy of balancing insulation may be more. So the takeaway that I want to give you from this is thinking about the flow of the, of the energy in the building. So if you have uh, usable gains, uh, usable internal gains and usable solar gains that we just talked about, having the uh, loss, the envelope heat loss and um, reducing that envelope heat loss may be a better strategy uh, than trying to rely on those gains or the other way around, trying to make the, the losses more uh, more covered by the passive heating gains. A caveat of uh, looking at and relying on the passive uh, heat gains is the overheating. So the graph you see here, um, oh my apologies, it seems like I'm not sharing the graph. Do you, do you see the graph right now? Okay, perfect. Uh, so sorry about that. Uh, so the the graph you see here is about um, the um, no average number of days that uh, we're going to have uh, heat above 30 degrees Celsius in British Columbia. It's actually a very um, uh, important um, topic for the future of the, the province. If you look at the metro regions, the urban areas of our province, uh, Victoria, Vancouver, um, all the way to uh, Okanagan and Kamloops and Kootenays, uh, we will see that uh, you know, we, everywhere, pretty much everywhere uh, across the, the, the north and, and the south, we are seeing uh, more chances of uh, warm days, more extreme uh, events, and that would uh, translate into um, different conditions for, for the building and more possibility of overheating. So let's keep that in mind. Let's keep uh, this, um, these issues in mind and uh, let's really try to think about the, that longer picture. And a high solar heat gain coefficient may, um, may be something you may want to avoid because of that. Another thing is that it's inherently hard for the building energy models to, um, uh, to consider the surroundings of the building. And that is a part of uh, the due diligence that comes in the project to, to really understand what is the real indication of having a high solar heat gain for a window. Maybe you are not getting any window, any window gains in the first place because of all of the obstructions. And if that is the case, do we really want to um, focus on um, that, uh, that, uh, that obstruction um, and really want to focus on uh, having the solar heat gain coefficient as one of the methods of we bringing more heat inside the house when it's not really uh, the case. Now in the project number two, um, we want to talk a little bit about a duplex where the two projects are, uh, the, there are two buildings that are connected together. However, I want to start this with a question and, and, a, and a hypothetical scenario, but the scenario is coming from something that we have already seen. 
So my question is, imagine there is uh, there is one of these homes, uh, the owner of that wants to do two very simple things. They want to re-insulate the attic spaces and they want to make the house airtight as well. Um, it's going to happen in such a way that uh, they are they don't have access to the other place or they don't want to um, uh, you know, do, the, do the work together for any reason or they're not available. Um, and we are left on only one side. In this case, we are Im imagining or assuming that we have weak separation between the two units. And that means that to make them really airtight and to re-insulate the attic spaces, we, we are only going to rely on, on just one of the units. Now, my question from you is that what do you think the overall performance of uh, these, uh, this uh, work is? How, how many percentages do you think uh, this um, change is going to improve uh, the energy efficiency of our building, um, at least in a standardized case. And to get there, uh, we can go to a step in. We have also prepared a duplex project. Um, so this duplex project is um, basically we have only considered one of the units, only the eastern unit. And we are going to go in there. Uh, we are going to um, you know, look at the all of the things that we have put in there. So let's imagine that we want to increase the no, amount of insulation in the attic to 18 inches. Uh, we also want to go and make a more airtight building um, that, that gets a, 3 ACH. Um, going to the run page, we can start the run and we can uh, try to wrap our head around how well this building is performing. So we are already at the step two. Now, um, if I want to uh, create um, a, you know, if I want to understand properly how uh, the overall building is going to perform, I actually need to look at these two together. And that is something you will learn, uh, especially in the renovation projects, if you don't have access to the whole building, if you're not going to make, making, be making change to the whole building, uh, it's still significant that you put that whole building as an status quo. Uh, inside uh, inside the uh, inside the simulation process. So uh, thinking about it that way, um, I think uh, what we will see here is that our building on the right is the one that we had access to, and we got the ACH. We um, we um, are meeting a step two, and again, I have to highlight that this metrics that are for the step code do not apply to renovation projects. This is, uh, we are using those metrics that are still very relevant, very um, applicable to the overall building energy performance, but ERS scores are um, the sort of things that we are going to uh, try to work on in the future more and, and feature more in this interface as we are uh, developing the, um, the, um, the interface for the renovations. If you want to really go and look at all of those uh, those two buildings at the same time, uh, what's very important for us is to um, actually add the other part inside the stepping interface. And that is actually pretty simple. Um, so uh, the um, duplex project, the east unit, we just need to go and click on copy. I hope you have watched the Stubbins introductory video and you're familiar with the work that uh, this does. So uh, you can, all you need to do is to swap north, east, and west, um, or we can you know, use one of the other options depending on what project you have. If you swap the east and west of the building, um, then uh, we, we basically will take everything in, in that building, make a mirror of that, just like in this, um, a slide that you have the two buildings being the, the mirror of each other. So in that mirror building that I can name West Unit, I will um, go into it. All I need to do here is to uh, reduce the blown in insulation from 18 to 12 because that other building is not getting that boost. I'm also going to assume that we do such a great job with air tightness that the ACH overall comes down for both of the units and uh, we don't really have to worry about that. I can click on a start and I don't want to uh, spend time here. In the sake of time, I'm just going to go back and I'm just going to um, go back to my uh, duplex project. 
And here you see that the stepping has given us a new option. It's called run all together. So when you run this, it just picks up both of the units and runs them at the same time to give you a unified uh, suggestion for both of them. Um, and uh, it will give you the overall performance criteria as well. And what you will see is that the other unit, the inclusion of the other unit has been enough to drag this design down and uh, make it hit a step one instead of a higher step. Um, and that is um, basically the, the issue that you will uh, face with if you are uh, just considering the part of the, the building that you're renovating. Now, one way to address this is to really work on air tightness, is to really work on separations, uh, is to really make sure that these two uh, buildings are not uh, interacting with each other as much as possible, or just look at it holistically. And uh, to answer the question that I asked you early on, what percent do you think this improvement was? In terms of the um, uh, energy uh, density metric, uh, it was about 7.5% when the work was done on only one project. So. Um, not much of a substantial improvement. If you um, have seen one of our previous webinars, you are hopefully very familiar with this uh, visualization. Uh, here we say that uh, energy is like water in a bucket, and if you have a hole in that bucket, all of the energy tends to escape from there. However, um, thickening the walls of the bucket is not going to address any of those losses. So we are uh, in the interest of um, fixing the issues, we're really trying to understand and address those uh, paths of uh, weakest um, uh, heat transfer, paths of highest heat transfer, I'm sorry. So the takeaway from this uh, design number two is to understand and appreciate the full scope of the project, especially in the integrated design process. This uh, comes in handy a lot. And project number three is where I'm hoping to bring all of this information together and uh, really try to um, uh, consolidate the, the things that we have seen uh, in the previous two projects in terms of decision making and understanding the load, understanding the trends and understanding um, the, the project's scope in order to um, uh, do, a, uh, do a cost effective work. Now, project number three um, is uh, going to really um, talk about other people's um, work and sometimes like the need to uh, fix something that has been wrong. And uh, I think this picture encapsulates it, encapsulates it pretty well. Uh, I'm really hoping that that wire is a low voltage wire that has been uh, put inside the, the uh, plug that way. Uh, they have been very um, easy going with the number of uh, cuts that they have created inside the air barrier uh, in order to um, put the plug in there. Uh, the insulation is jammed in the um, stud cavities and uh, that jamming doesn't really uh, do any service to the thermal uh, insulation values of the um, um, the, the insulation piece, the bath insulation, and the sealant is also not done very properly. So um, coming uh, out of um, the, um, this you know, uh, project, we, we are really hoping that um, this, like, this level of detail, we are really hoping that um, in the later stage, this was caught by a building inspector or the rest of the crew and they have addressed that. But it's not a secret that we are dealing with a lot of um, um, complications into the existing buildings when it comes to uh, performance and heat loss. And understanding what is the best way, what is the most cost-effective path, what is the most um, uh, intuitive way of um, uh, addressing these um, issues, I think that would hopefully um, be possible or, or you will see the, the example of that from coming in uh, of, with a design that is a step one and taking it to a step three with a step being um, through the next couple of minutes. Um, again, this is all talking about addressing the issues and, and doing things that are the most effective uh, and uh, step in is uh, 
basically our way of uh, putting all of the best practices together, not necessarily um, the, um, uh, the, the, the process. The process needs to be internalized and used by uh, the um, construction crew and, and construction design team uh, in order to actually uh, create a design that, that holistically works well throughout the whole project. And this is, this is meant to be the starting point of it. So let's look at that design. Uh, we have put it inside our interface. Uh, it's a very um, simple design with... Um, so going into the design, uh, we are seeing a two-story building uh, with a uh, cathedral roof and a heap roof and basement. Very simple design. Uh, the air tightness is national average, so it's not uh, very airtight, somewhere around 3.5 to 5. ACH um, and uh, the wall stud is uh, two by uh, four, just a simple wall system. Um, and we also have a foundation that is using overlapping insulation. This is some of the work that uh, you will see in older buildings having edge strips and uh, you know lines of insulation that is not quite um, uh, quite um, uh, uh, thorough throughout the throughout the uh, in building uh, uh, foundation wall. Um, so going to the mechanical system, we have the mechanical. Uh, this is just a simple baseboard heater and nothing really special there. And if you click on a start, we see that um, the meeting is really performing very poorly as expected. Uh, it doesn't meet any significant step. Uh, it does not really have uh, any, you know, uh, practical and, and good comparison with the other um, other metrics of the just the primary metrics of the step code. Um, and in the meantime, uh, the um, the design that we are getting is uh, also have experiencing a lot of heat loss, a lot of envelope heat loss, and uh, not much of a gain to really compensate for it. So, if you want to understand how to improve this. The, I think the bigger question, the biggest question, comes down to how to improve this. And uh, to improve it, we see a lot of cues inside the step in result. Uh, so uh, one of them is that to achieve overall higher step, improve the building envelope. This may be achieved by increasing R value or lowering U value of assemblies. Um, the other one is envelope compass. So envelope compass is uh, one of the features that we have been really excited to. Um, um, roll out uh, with our uh, step in interface and uh, that feature is um, basically um, you know talking uh, about where you want to take your design next now if you hover over the envelope compass it will give you an idea of what it does but uh, what i want to kind of uh, tell you is the way that i like to put it is um, for the amount of heat loss you're getting in different assemblies uh, how much investment have been made for that part. So if the fenestrations are really close to the edge, that means you are getting a lot of heat loss from the fenestrations and uh, for, for, the, for the amount of um, you know, investment that has gone into them relative to other things. And if you want to turn that into an actionable metric uh, or actionable um, item, uh, you basically need to look at where the envelope compass is pointing you towards. Here it's pointing you towards fenestration and foundation walls and try to address those. So let's take a look at that. Uh, we can go to the window page uh, that you're familiar with and we want to uh, look at the high performance window. So a window manufacturer will suggest to us triple glaze PVC and medium solar heating coefficient uh, window as a result. And you remove the, the, the um, other options to see how that's going to perform. For the foundation, we will go uh, to uh, the overlapping insulation and we see that there is room to have uh, more insulation um, kind of added uh, to, to the existing foundation system. So uh, we um, create um, a, an ICF system uh, instead of that and we try to just, you know, uh, add the missing insulation pieces inside uh, this uh, this wall and really try to make that uh, path of uh, heat transfer blocked and as much as possible uh, with a continuous layer of insulation or, or two layers in this example. 
So moving on to the step in results, we try to run it one more time. Uh, I just want to to, sh uh, to to highlight that here we are using a step in, in another way. We are using it for only one one alternative. So we're just like taking one design and taking it forward. Now, you may be underwhelmed in the beginning to see that the uh, uh, step we are making is a still a step one, uh, which is uh, not not very great. Uh, but uh, looking at uh, the uh, step um, uh, smart suggestions, you see that this is because of the air tightness. So it's telling you to achieve overall higher step, improve the air tightness of the design. So keep in mind that all of these graphs and interfaces that we have are essentially um, things that help you see one dimension of the design's performance. But it's important to, at some point, leave them and go into other metrics. So here we, we see uh, maybe a slight improvement in the foundation walls and fenestration, but uh, the improvement that we really need to make uh, is for air tightness. And again, um, this is, um, you know, for a renovation project, we are using some of the step code metrics because they are somewhat indicative and the step in interface is going to have more special metrics for renovation projects, but all of them are tied together. So when we look at one um, energy metric or environmental metric, it should be enough for us to make some really important decisions for the project. So I go to the general page, I improve the uh, air tightness to improved practices, and I will go back to run and I start it again. Um, so we are hoping that we do a good job with the, um, um, the air tightness and we really make it airtight um, so that we, uh, we, we are addressing the issue that has been told us. And if this was a new build, we, we were at a step three, uh, which is pretty significant and also on the edge of the step four, as you see in this um, uh, energy um, performance, envelope performance graph that Stepin has, that uh, we are very close to the edge of the step four and um, just further improvements there is going to uh, get us over the edge and into even a higher step. And that is what you also will see um, uh, when it comes to the load. So you see the loads are lower and they are being better addressed. Um, so we are um, leveraging a lot of the insights that we got from uh, the graphs inside the previous uh, um, phases of, of, this, of this work, which was, which was being progressed in a very rapid fashion. Um, so the solar heating coefficient here is medium. Again, uh, that is, uh, you know, the kind of the recommendation that we got from the manufacturer, not necessarily a step in suggestion, but uh, should be a, a very routine and normal thing. And the question that uh, I, I know that many of you may be having is, what is the indication of uh, this renovation in terms of the bottom line? How much is, is it going to cost for us? Now, in the step in V, typically tend to be very conservative with our costs and avoid the sticker shocks for people. Um, uh, in, in the meantime of being accurate, we, we try to be uh, more on the, on the more cautious side of things. Um, so looking at the window component and also uh, you know, some of the, the air tightness components, it's gonna be around $50,000 which could be a lot for um, the one renovation project, but the value gained, the value added uh, on the building and also um, on the comfort that the occupants are gonna get and the, on the uh, bill that they are gonna see in terms of utility should be very significant. And uh, you see that the costing uh, sunburst is going to show us uh, the, the contributors of, of the costing in different phases of the project. So the air tightness cost, uh, you know, this is showing cost of everything in the house, but you can see the effect of air tightness cost in, in the overall uh, um, house um, um, costing budget. Um, and, you know, adding that in, even as an afterthought, is an inside, even inside, um, a renovation project could be um, uh, pretty useful for, um, for the ongoing performance of the building. Now, this $50,000 uh, also can be reduced um, for uh, many of the users by um, looking at rebates. So if you click on available rebates for this design, uh, this will take you to 
Better Homes BC. Now, in Better Homes BC, uh, we are going to have uh, some options added here, and we have inputted these as um, project features according to the stepping design. So we don't have a heat pump here. Uh, we don't have a change in the hot water system here, and we, um, you know, can skip some of those rebates or look into them as points of decision making. However, uh, if you look at the um, window and door replacement and draft proofing, you see that there is a small amount available per item and there are quite a few uh, windows in this building. Um, you also will see installation rebates um, that is going to be very in handy when it comes to um, adding some insulation on the, on the basement section. Um, you're also going to see rebates for home energy evaluation. Uh, there are um, items that go much beyond that, such as uh, refund on the mortgage loan insurance uh, that's going to be uh, opened up because of making these changes. So hopefully a combination of these, um, uh, these incentives and rebates and, and programs that are available are going to reduce the, um, uh, the uh, burden of that for the home builder or homeowner or renovator. What I really want to highlight is that the uh, scope of understanding the, uh, the value chain energy efficiency causes in a building is actually um, not studied uh, as well as it should, in my opinion. I have yet to see um, a Canadian study that is giving us some insights about the effect of performance on, uh, on the home uh, value. And this value could go much more than just a dollar amount, just uh, the uh, less time that a home stays in the market, the longer uh, span of life that it has and, and less need for costly repairs. And uh, these can come on top of all of the utility bills. One example of that is in the US, uh, there is a study that's, uh, that has been showing for every dollar that is reduced from the monthly operation of a home, the value of that home goes up by somewhere around $20.75, which could be quite significant, even though this number may be a little bit outdated, um, it's still um, should hold relevant. And I think this sort of um, value, under, value engineering and understanding the value chains uh, should be available. And this is something we are working hard uh, towards achieving. And on that note, if uh, you know of a study or you know of a resource that we may have missed in that um, uh, exploration, please, please, please get in touch with us, info at lambda.science, and uh, give us a heads up of uh, how we can uh, put more of that value chain inside the Stepping's reporting interface. Now, going back to the panel, um, this, uh, th this projects that we just walked over uh, hopefully give you a few insights about how to navigate the improvement of a design, how to um, fix some of the issues that you, you are facing with in, in a retrofit, and overall, how to practically and um, realistically get better um, Im improvements from the investment that is being made in a building. Uh, so the takeaway for uh, the this particular project was understanding the, the right investments, understanding uh, what is the, the, the primary uh, sources of heat loss and uh, how much every dollar added to them or invested on them is going to affect the overall picture. Now, when we look at the limitations of the building design uh, in the conventional process, uh, this is something I wanted to tie that uh, last piece into. Um, so the first thing is that energy usage is an afterthought. And um, it has been an afterthought in the construction process uh, classically, um, and it's being seen as uh, a, just a compliance, thing, just a turning, uh, just a turnkey uh, solution um, is often seeked by um, the home builders in order to just uh, verify their existing design. The issue with that is um, the lost opportunities in costing and energy efficiency. As you saw in the examples that we provided, we don't really need very deep insights into even the shape of the house. We just need some very early stage information. And, and those information uh, is going to help us uh, better um, um, 
navigate the, the, the renovation process or the, the new build process. And going back to the project number three, I really want to highlight that uh, in, in, in the project that we just came up with, the, um, the amount of work for a home builder, for a homeowner, I'm sorry, is actually quite minimal. Like we were able to get um, very high levels of building performance with very uh, low levels of um, disruption in the life and and the building usage uh, by the by the homeowner. Uh, all we did was adding some insulation along the basement. Uh, in in the meantime, we uh, improved the windows, which is a very typical re and re job. The air tightness considerations can be done. Uh, through uh, one of the uh, consultants or uh, technology providers that are, that are out there, or it could be as simple as picking up a thermal camera and uh, having a blower door test. In the meantime, on a cold day or a warm day, I understand where uh, the heats are, are escaping from. And uh, minimizing that could be just by using some of the some of the foam or sealing the um, outlets, the, the plugs and outlets. Um, it could also be through uh, going into, into the attics and uh, other parts of the buildings and understand where the membranes are not continuous and improve them. So having that in the, in the beginning of the process, instead of having it as an afterthought, uh, I think it's very, very significant uh, when you uh, think about what are the uh, possible um, options available for, the, for a given budget instead of looking at it the other way around. Um, so the um, houses that um, we are looking as individual components or with individual components, they are definitely not performing as expected as overall. I think project number two, example number two, really provided an, an insight into how just looking at one piece or one component or one design is not really going to cut it. Um, and then uh, the 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 last but uh, you know the, the last two points are about uh, having the building choices the the building choices are um, need they need to be scientific they need to be done in a in a fashion that really appreciates the um, characteristics of these uh, components that we are putting in a building and not uh, because of um, uh, market um, forces or sales um, pitches and that would also enable us to explore more options so opening it opens up our possibilities and really shows us how we can um, effectively address uh, the the energy performance with the with the options that we have available to us now uh, for the sake of time uh, i am going to skip to the cpd point and uh, the ask the questions there um, so uh, we, for the webinar recording uh, people and also the people on, on YouTube, uh, we uh, skip the CPD points for the questions uh, because that's only for the live audience. And um, now we are moving towards the, the question piece. Thank you for your question. So uh, one of the um, questions that, was, uh, that is here is, um, do, uh, do we um, consider the um, payback inside our uh, renovation uh, insights? Uh, we are working on this feature. This is something that we are uh, hoping to roll out very soon. Um, the, um, the timeline for this is uh, somewhat reliant on that overall value chain that uh, we um, uh, we uh, we talked about so understanding what are the other pieces of uh, value that a uh, a homeowner can get from doing the renovation work is just not the monthly bill although that's kind of in the front and center. Uh, once we have a very clear picture of uh, the whole value chain, which which can be uh, more value on the on the building, some of the um, better durability or performance or uh, just the operational cost piece that uh, could translate into um, you know higher um, levels of uh, comfort and in the meantime uh, the lower bill uh, and allow the homeowners to make some informed decision based on those uh, that's our challenge right now and we are really trying to um, make a a system that's very holistic make an insight make a metric that is very holistic on that and uh, you can stay tuned inside our uh, Stevin newsletter 
and that will uh, hopefully uh, be out uh, very soon and we can we can explore that a bit now looking at any other questions uh, yes apologies for the technical issue uh, that you are mentioning I um, I'll be sure to send you a recording after the webinar so that if you have missed something um, you can uh, you can take a look at it I am seeing that uh, there were some uh, joins and leaves inside this chat room, so uh, hopefully uh, that uh, that recording is going to be taking a few of the of the issues away. Last but not least, our yes, our next webinar is going to be um, hopefully uh, on a deeper dive on these subjects. We are going to address some of the uh, issues that was mentioned. Uh, I'm hoping that the video quality is, it has been good, and if any of you have had uh, internet connection issues. Uh, again, the webinar recording will be sent to you, and uh, you can you can take a look at it there. Any other questions? Okay, so let's uh, let's actually monitor the chat uh, as well um, and see if something is coming in. Yes, so then again, uh, for the CPD points, make sure to uh, send your answers to the email provided. Um, and also stay tuned in our newsletter for the next webinar. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us uh, for the uh, this has been webinar. We hope that the insights provided there uh, would have been um, interesting and, and uh, insightful enough uh, for you to uh, take your design forward and um, um, use a step in for your next projects as always uh, you know we are available uh, through uh, online chat and also through email and, and telephone uh, if you have any questions or you are not sure if a step in is the right uh, choice for your next project i hope everyone have a great day and thank you for joining us